Hi everyone, Angela here. In this video, I'll show you how to make my fabric Easter baskets with bunny ears. Links for all the tools I use and my PDF patterns can be found in the description below. Print out the pattern and cut out four of the main pieces and four lining pieces. Join the sides and tape together. There's also a pattern piece for the ear and one for the inner ear. Some fabrics you can use for the basket are polyester minky polar fleece that has a nap or emboss microfiber. For this video I'll be using quilting cotton for the outer and inner layer and also for the inner ear pieces. To give the outer layer a puffier look I'll be adding fusible batting with the glue dots on one side. And for the lining and the ears I'll be using a medium weight non-woven fusible interfacing. Using the main pattern piece, cut one out of batting and also the outer fabric. With the glue side up, place the wrong side of the outer fabric onto the batting and press it together. Another way to cut out the fabric is to take the lining pattern and trace it onto the interfacing and then just roughly cut it out so that it's slightly bigger. Then place the glue side down onto the wrong side of the lining and press together. Now you can precisely cut out both layers at the same time. Trace out four of the bunny ears onto the interfacing and cut out as one single piece. Check the direction of the nap if you're using a minky fabric and lay it down with the wrong side up. Place the glue side of the interfacing on top and press together. Use scissors or your rotary blade to cut them all out. Then cut out two of the inner ear pieces out of fabric only. Center them on top of two of the ear pieces with the straight edges lined up, then place pins through the middle to hold in place. Now everything is prepped and ready to be sewn. I'll be using the Brother NV50S sewing machine and it's exclusive to Echidna Sewing here in Australia. To sew on the inner ear, I'll be using 31, the Rick Rack stitch, but you can use any decorative or overcasting stitch. If you're finding this video helpful, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and turn on all notifications, and also leave a comment below. When you get to the point, have your needle down, lift your foot, pivot, and continue. I love the way it looks like a nice thick zigzag. Now place the other ear pieces on top with right sides together, then pin or clip in place. Select the straight stitch and also turn on the automatic reverse. Leave the short end open and stitch all around with a quarter inch seam allowance, back tacking at the start and finish and pivoting at the point. Trim off the tip of the point and also the side seams on a slight curve. On this other ear, I'm going to give you a little bonus tip. When you get to the point, leave your needle down and lift your foot and cut a length of thread that's about 20 inches or 50 centimeters long. Remove the clips and then place half the thread between the layers and right up against the needle. Lower the presser foot and sew one stitch and leave your needle down. Lift the foot and then pull the top of the thread around right against the needle again, tuck it in between the layers and out of the way. Then continue sewing to the end. By doing this you can see the threads just wrapped around one stitch at the top. Trim the point making sure not to cut that thread. Turn the ears right side out and use something like a knitting needle to gently push the point out. On the other ear, pull on both ends of the thread to get a nice point and then you can just easily remove the thread. Making sure that the fabric is flat, fold the bottom in half with the inner ear together. I'll just mark this so you can see. For both ears, stitch one inch down through all the layers, half an inch from the fold, 
back tacking at the start and finish. Use something to help spread out the inner fabric and press down evenly to create a small box pleat. Fold the wider sides of the main fabric together and cut tiny notches in the center. With right sides together, center the ears on the notch and stay stitch quarter of an inch from the edge. To sew the curved sides together, make sure that the fabric isn't pleated at the bottom and that the top and side edges line up. Start your seam quarter of an inch below the top edge, back tack here but you don't need to back tack at the bottom. At the bottom corners, just continue stitching through leaving about a 1 inch tail. Again at the top, you'll just have that little bit that isn't sewn. Repeat for all the other sides and do exactly the same for the sides of the lining. Turn the lining right side out and place inside the outer basket. Match the top edge and all of the side seams. We'll be stitching all around the top and leaving an opening on the narrower side. Open up the seams and match together, then pin through about half an inch to the right of it. Then clip the seams together. Do the same thing on the other side and pin through to the left of the seam. Then clip or pin all around. Use a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance all around, back tacking at the pins. Turn the basket right side out and fold and smooth out the seam allowances of the opening. Edge stitch an eighth of an inch all around. When you're folding to sew this top edge, you should have just a tiny little bit of the main fabric showing. This way the lining doesn't stick out on the right side. Because the lining is a slightly smaller pattern, it's nice and neat on the inside without any extra folds on the bottom. Put the tops of the ears together and using the template and an awl, make a hole through all the layers and install a cam snap set. If you don't have these, you can sew on regular snaps or just tack the ears together. Make sure to check out some of my other videos. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, take care and happy sewing.